So I'm restricting my comments to some overview uh, issues. Uh, basically, the outline of my talk is to mention briefly the plight of children. I think these children who presented here have done great justice to this first point. And then I'll say something about the trends that we have seen over the years, the role of global and national efforts, share my country's experience with you, and then end by just mentioning a few emerging challenges. All that I can say about the plight of children, especially in the early 1980s and 1990s, is that it was horrific. We are talking about 16 years, referring to Durban 1 and Durban 2, but AIDS had been raging for a much longer period. And raging starting from my country, Uganda, which was one of the first countries on the continent to experience a mature epidemic. We had appallingly high death rates. And uh, the struggle to get antiretroviral therapy was, as we all know, uh, a very tough struggle. But pharmaceutical companies then and now did not see profit in making children's drugs. Up to now, as my colleague Dai Gibbs will tell you, we remain very much without adequate, appropriate pediatric formulations. So we had Hola. This was one of the children that came to my ward. We are helpless. We couldn't do anything for this kid. He looked like a four or five year old, but in fact he was 14. And uh, HIV had crippled him so much. The ward was full of such children. One day, my colleague said, let's find out what we are dealing with in our ward. To do an HIV test was like committing a crime. It was something that you couldn't do. And if you did it, you couldn't dare ask parents whether you'd test children for HIV. That was the situation. So my colleague went ahead, got ethical clearance, and carried out anonymous HIV testing on our ward. He didn't work the next day. The results were devastating. Virtually, all children on the ward whom we are treating for malnutrition, TB, infections that never cleared, were all HIV positive. I'm talking about the year 1990. So the only glimmer of hope came with President Bush announcing PEPFA. There had been talk for quite a long time, and talk is what was the case at that time of treating HIV, of doing something about it. And Global Fund, UNAIDS, WHO had been talking about uh, taking initiatives, and we, are, we don't have time to go into those, but they had not materialized. And soon after PEPFAR was announced, Global Fund also came on board in a practical form. This slide from Dr. Musime uh, is looking at the studies that have recently been done uh, to determine the effectiveness of uh, uh, pediatric antiretroviral therapy, but in fact, 
in adults, such studies were carried out decades ago. And this is the extent to which children have been neglected. But now, this is this child of hope is the child that is currently emerging out of this crisis, and I hope this becomes the child of the future. And I hope these kids here will not, in the next decade, be singing such sad songs that uh, we have heard today. So following uh, from 2006, uh, we saw a rise in kids access accessing treatment, and the numbers have been going up. And this graph can be reproduced from many countries, as has been remarked uh, in the introductory uh, comments at the beginning of the session. And we are beginning to see a much happier situation of uh, death rates coming down and uh, the new infections also falling. This is the Uganda data, but this kind of data can be found in many other countries uh, on the continent. And uh, most pleasingly, that appalling death, I don't see those kind of children, the picture of which I showed you uh, anymore, but new problems are emerging especially among adolescents, and we need to do something about this as well. However, the most in, uh, important thing is that from the beginning of the epidemic up to now, children are always marginalized. They are always lacking behind adults all the time, in every country, in every age group. And this is the kind of the situation that places special responsibility to pediatricians, to people who care for children, to understand that the problem of kids is much more serious than the problem of adults, and that the work that we have to do is much more important because uh, in adults, this new target the international strategy of 1990 90, is basically aimed at adults. But for children to achieve this kind of level, there are special challenges that we need to be uh, conscious of. So we have to have systematically um, a systematic program to address children in order to have uh, an end to pediatric AIDS. And here is evidence that we can succeed. This is again Uganda data. Uh, when uh, test and treat started, 2000 and after 2006, you can see uh, a sharp rise among the children that started to, uh, to access treatment and uh, this applied uh, in all age groups. However, the special challenges that I've been talking about relate to a critical need to have viral suppression. In all age group, viral suppression, although quite high, is not good enough. It remains low and worrying. And on average, we are getting uh, viral suppression of about 70% uh, in the children. Those who are particularly difficult in Uganda data are those between two and four years, as you can see over there. But the critical test that needs to be carried out is the PCR test for early infant diagnosis, and we are doing very, very badly. The only exception are countries in Southern Africa, led by the country at the last Durban conference, which was doing worst 
that was South Africa. Now it is doing best in early infant diagnosis, but the rest of the continent, the levels according to UNAIDS data are appalling. We need to do much more to reach a stage where we can talk about 1990. Now, just to take you back, when we had nevirapine monotherapy. That was the period of great worry. Nevirapine monotherapy looked like the state of the art for Africa. The rest of the world was using proper, was using proper drugs to control, uh, to control mother to child transmission. So Africa had a choice between the terrible and the horrible. But there, a big debate took place as to whether it was ESCO to use nevirapine. Look, it was either nevirapine or nothing. Those who were positive after uh, mothers had used nevirapine were about 15%, and those who didn't uh, use nevirapine uh, children who got infected were 27%. We didn't like this, but it was a choice between the bad and the horrible. This made me determined that in the future, we should have one unity of purpose and program that we should only have one standard of care for all people in the world. There should be no standard of care for the poor and another standard of care for the adults. If it is there, we must do all that we can to make sure that it is eliminated. Now, the, pre the situation is much more present. The mother-to-child transmission rates, I mean the uh, infants are getting infected using much more robust mother-to-child prevention measures is about 5%. We are still getting over 6,000 children infected. This is unacceptably high, and this cuts out our work for the future. As I come to the end of my brief uh, remarks, I like to say that for children, we are not aiming at the adult level. We are not having the adult target of 90, 90, 90. We are aiming to eliminate pediatric AIDS. So we need to think critically out of the box of the adults and look at pregnant mothers and do all that we can to get many, if possible, 99%. I would wish it was 100, but we have to be realistic. And then we have to have we have to have all the babies born to positive mothers get uh, early infant diagnosis, and we have to get all the children who are HIV positive get appropriate pediatric formulations, which we don't currently have. There have also been some other special opportunities that have been identified for children that have not had an infant diagnosis and treatment and are living in society and diagnosed. There are special opportunities that we know about for treating, uh, for identifying and treating such children. The severely malnourished, like the child you saw, uh, the people presenting with TB, both parents and children, children whose parents are on ART and hospitalized children and children coming for immunization. That's an opportunity to catch those who have escaped having an infant diagnosis and get them treated. Lastly, the new challenges. 
we have challenges of adolescents. As they mature, they will have, you know, the, the, that is the age that is very difficult and that is the age which we, for which we need to find special problems, uh, I mean sp special solutions. We need to target friendly services to this group of children. We need to address sexual and reproductive health. And many of these children uh, drop out of school because of various reasons. But most difficult of all, pediatricians will tell you, are children who are transitioning from child clinics to adult clinics. We need to find a solution uh, for those kids. So ending uh, pediatric AIDS is certainly achievable. This is the attitude we must have, but we have a lot of work to do in early infant diagnosis, maximize opportunities uh, for identifying children for testing, strengthen diagnostic, uh, that is uh, for PCR tests. It is not enough to just do early infant diagnosis. You must get the results and you must get children treated and we need communication with policy makers because many of them unfortunately have begun to think that the AIDS crisis is over and are not taking as vigorous steps as they need to if we are to end this horrible epidemic. Thank you very much.